The Practice Advisory on Zika Virus is a joint publication from ACOG and SMFM that is periodically updated. It is recommended that OBGYNs likewise check the ACOG, the CDC, or the SMFM websites periodically for updates on Zika information. As part of the Delaware OBGYN Resident Lecture Series, we will briefly review the most recently updated portions of the advisory, travel restrictions and testing, both updated April 2017. Today we will start off easy with just the updated travel restrictions, and the next lecture will be testing. Part 1. What do you tell people who want to travel? Part 2. What do you tell people who have returned from traveling? Okay, travel restrictions. You need to know where Zika is. This is information that keeps changing, and this is about where Zika is as of April 2017. Most people have a not-so-good grasp of geography. Now, a thorough knowledge of geography isn't required, and in this age of the Internet, a thorough knowledge of anything isn't required. You can simply go to the above websites and do a search of any country for Zika status. However, it's a real time saver if you know the places that definitely have it, so you can launch right into your Zika prevention spiel. For that reason, we'll start with geography lesson, which will lead to the Zika prevention spiel. Right off the bat, here's the map. All the purple areas are where the Zika virus has been found. Interestingly, here's a map of the tropics. Notice some similarities? Geography Lesson 1. What are the tropics? It's a region between the latitude of about 23 degrees north, which is the Tropic of Cancer, and 23 degrees south, the Tropic of Capricorn. They correspond to the axial tilt of the Earth and have the sun directly overhead at least once a year. When the northern hemisphere is tilted toward the sun, it is summer. When it is away, it's winter. Although the term tropical is associated with hot, humid areas with lush vegetation, there are many places that have wet and dry seasons. Tropical rainforests have their rainfall pretty evenly distributed throughout the year. The incidence of malaria, another mosquito-borne illness, peaks in areas where the highest temperatures coincide with the greatest rainfall, leading to flooding and stagnant water, perfect for the breeding of mosquitoes. This gives us a basic feel for where you will find Zika. Everybody knows about Zika in South America and the Caribbean, so let's start in Africa. Frequently, Africa is informally divided into North Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa. Sub-Saharan Africa includes all those countries either partially or completely south of the Sahara Desert. North Africa includes countries in the League of Arab States, including Egypt, Libya, Morocco, Algeria, and Tunisia. Sub-Saharan Africa is basically everything else. But the distribution of Zika is not Sub-Saharan Africa, but more accurately, Tropical Africa, the part between the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn. In fact, a 62-acre rainforest in Uganda called the Zika Forest was home to 40 types of mosquitoes and was perfectly suited to the study of mosquitoes. And in 1946, mosquito study began as part of the Yellow Fever Research Institute. In 1947, a virus was found in rhesus monkeys and called the Zika virus. In addition to Uganda, just about all of the countries in tropical Africa are included. In very general terms, the regions of West Africa including Nigeria, Niger, Mali, Ivory Coast, Burkina Faso, Ghana, Liberia, Cape Verde, and Senegal. East Africa, including Uganda, Tanzania, Madagascar, Kenya, Malawi, and Zimbabwe. And Central Africa, including Chad, Equatorial Guinea, Cameroon, Angola, and Congo. In very general terms, countries of North Africa and the countries of Southern Africa, including South Africa, 
Botswana, Swaziland, Namibia are not known to have Zika. In Asia, the big one is India, but not China. Zika is also found in the tropical countries of Thailand, Vietnam, Indonesia, Laos, Cambodia, Philippines, Malaysia, Bangladesh, and East Timor. Basically, aside from Southeast Asia, the rest of Asia has been spared. Europe is okay, and so is the United States. Well, except for Florida and Texas. Canada is fine. Nothing bad ever happens in Canada. Australia and New Zealand aren't on the list yet. And then there is South America, Central America, and the Caribbean nations. Central America is easy. It's all of them. Mexico, Belize, Panama, Nicaragua, Guatemala, Honduras, Costa Rica, El Salvador. The Caribbean is easy, too. It's basically all of them. The Lucayan Archipelago, which is the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos. The Greater Antilles, including Cuba, Puerto Rico, Haiti, Jamaica, Dominican Republic, and the Cayman Islands. And the Lesser Antilles including a zillion of them, like the British and U.S. Virgin Islands, St. Martin, Anguilla, Antigua, Guadeloupe, Martinique, St. Lucia, Grenada, Aruba, Trinidad, and Tobago. For South America, it's everything, with the notable exceptions of Uruguay and Chile. Chile is probably safe because of the Andes mountain range. High altitude doesn't allow survival of mosquitoes. Mosquitoes aren't usually found above 6,500 feet above sea level. In fact, the high elevations of South and Central America are considered lower risk, as is Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa. So some tourist destinations are low risk, like Machu Picchu in Peru and Quito, Ecuador. However, the airport isn't in Machu Picchu. You have to land in the bad zone before you can get to the less bad zone. Good news, Bogota, Colombia is at 9,000 feet, as well as its El Dorado airport. Unfortunately, some sources actually recommend that because of the lack of oxygen there, you should consider not sleeping there. Keep in mind the San Diego Zoo, Baltimore's Inner Harbor, and Bogota, Colombia as good weekend day trips for the pregnant patient. So if your pregnant patient asks about travel to any of these places, the recommendation is no don't go during pregnancy if you don't have to. That goes for sexual partners as well. So certainly know your immigrant populations so you can answer those questions quickly and easily. Same goes for popular vacation destinations, which are often in Central America and the Caribbean, all of which are no-go. Florida and Texas may be a little tougher for some to avoid. I don't foresee any reason to go to Texas except for the oral OBGYN boards, but that applies to you residents, so plan accordingly. Everything else that you don't know for sure, look up on one of the previously mentioned websites. Now, if they have to go, like a funeral in Puerto Rico or a sister's wedding in Jamaica, the recommendation is still no. But if they are going, tell them to take precautions to minimize the risk. Precautions include using an EPA-approved insect repellent spray with DEET, DEET is safe in pregnancy and may be more effective than others like natural oils, like lemon, eucalyptus, and citronella. Staying indoors with air conditioning, covering exposed skin, treating with permethrin, which is an extract from chrysanthemums, products from Sawyer and Coleman can be found on Amazon. And lastly, using condoms or abstaining from sex with a partner who has traveled to an at-risk area. No sketches for this portion. Next time, we will talk about what you do when they return.